Over your last eight years, could you talk a little bit about the barriers that you have faced when trying to become a digital QS or a carbon QS or, or even the implementation and your experiences within the industry? Yeah, so I can definitely give it a go. Um, first barrier that I always go to and ask is awareness. How can you be aware of all the different digital construction skills, techniques, processes mm. out there when, especially when starting out. So yeah. what are your sources of information for learning about that? So you go to um, your university course. That, well, eight years ago, yeah. I don't think the agenda then was um, heavy on the uh, techniques that we're currently using now. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were using dim paper to do takeoff. Yeah. Um, Costex didn't enter until I think I was in year three or four. Yeah. And um, I don't, that's, that's one element. Um, yeah. For takeoff, how, how do you know what is the latest technique for that? Apart from learning from your seniors, seniors yeah. in the business and what they're teaching you at, at uni. Um, how do you get out um, and become aware of what the possibilities are? So if you talk about the, the knowledge and understanding of what's available in the industry, then are, are you kind of saying eight years ago during your starting out in university that perhaps the university courses aren't covering enough of this from the quantity for surveyors perspective now? I don't know. I mean, I want to be careful here. I don't want to be um, <laughs> I would criticizing. Say, uh, criticize and insult everyone. Go for it. At, at the time, I don't know what the agenda is now. Like I know from, so I'm in Denmark now. I've not had too many conversations with people in um, the UK education system. There are a couple of months ago I was, and I did catch up with the juniors and what they were learning. They are learning how to they're not, they're not using DIM paper, at least. Yeah. Um, I think the top, on the topic of BIM, I did hear that they're still using the term BIM level 2, which yeah. um, as far as it, it's gone yeah. in 2018, and this is in the UK, um, it's been replaced by the Information Management Mandate, ISO 19650, UK BIM framework. Anyone, like it might be naive, but anyone still talking about BIM level 2 is probably, what, six, six seven six, years out yeah. of date now. Um, if that, so if that's still how it's being taught, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to get back in the room and, and take a look. Like that's For anybody listening there for the universities, then please get in contact here because we'd like to hear from you to be able to start this conversation. Um, we have it with quite a number of universities in Ireland, uh, with the SCSI in Ireland. We should be also talking to the RICS on this because the reality is, and from what you're saying, is that perhaps we're not educating our QSs coming out of university with the right information in the right way, perhaps. Um, but we can, we, we'll come back to that a little bit in our educational piece. So other than access to information in, in understanding what software is available, contact for, uh, within the industry, et cetera, what other barriers did you come across after, after entering the market, after your studies? Yeah, I, um, it's probably another common one, but um, we could probably go down um, experience of, Resistance to change. Yeah. So construction's not, um, it's probably not well known for being, for ad adapting to change um, mm. and welcoming change. Yeah. Um, the, a lot of the uh, senior members of teams have been in the industry a long time. They've been promoted because they've got good experience. They've yeah. got ways that have worked on projects. They've delivered projects successfully. Uh, they might not see a need um, for change. Um, with change, it requires effort. Um, there is a cost to it, yeah. uh, whether it's, that's time or resources. Uh, and if you don't have a budget for that effort, for that time and resource, then um, maybe it gets put on the back burner. We're also busy as well. Yeah. Like Even people who might admire or um, recognize that new ways of working are important, when you are drowning in deliverables that you need to get out of mm. the door um maybe it's not prioritized as much as mm. even people would like it to be but if you are drowning in deliverables as you put it wouldn't it be advantageous to look at more digital orientated solutions to help you with that workload so you become more efficient in the delivering of that workload so you can do more with less if that's uh, i guess where i'm going with it Yes, ideally, you, you would want to take mm. full advantage. Like um, if we use takeoff, for example, if you were struggling to measure a, a huge building, 
and you were doing it by hand or you're doing it in a 2D point and click way and you're struggling to get all your quantities from um, the design information that you have, you might think, oh, I've heard of people who are extracting quantities from these models. Maybe I'll just do that. Mm. And like, like we know, it, it's not as easy as that. There's, you have to ask for information in the right way. Then you have to learn about information management. You have to learn about BIM. Um, you will probably want to get involved with the exchange information requirements to be able to just ask for the right information. Yeah. Then when you receive it, you need to make sure that it's to the quality that you need it in. Mm. So you've got to validate it. And all those different skills, that takes time to learn. So I think you answered your own question there in terms of how long was the return on investment. You're not, in reality, you're not talking a, a, a delivery life cycle you're probably not talking a project life cycle. It's probably multiple deliverables, multiple projects by the time you can get people up to speed in all of that information understanding. But still, wouldn't it be better in three years' time to have made the decision now to start implementing that than in three years' time when you look at your organization and go, I wish we started that three years ago? My answer is yes. Like. Yeah, of course, it, it, ha, it, ha, it has to be in that way, doesn't it? Uh, so even a little investment now on a small project surely will have more benefit for you in three years' time than zero investment now and you still having the same problems in three years' time. Yeah, but um, to give that, to make that a bit more tangible, yeah, it, sound, it sounds nice, but there aren't too many case studies or presentations out there, um, even at... Um, I'm really impressed by the uh, the presence of quantity surveyors there that are um, that's increasing at like Digital Construction Week. Yeah. But there's not too many people there even saying, "Wow, we changed this in our process and it saved us this amount of time." The case studies are not there yet because I don't think people are implementing any of this stuff yet. I honestly feel that the, that the quantity surveying organisations that are promoting this aren't really implementing it at a at a major level. They need to start showing that so we can learn from that as a as a discipline and as a group, right? 